we start our journey here at the Old Bailey, which is a courthouse named after the street on which it stands. Courthouses have been on this street since the 16th century, when it was attached to the medieval Newgate Jail. The original medieval court next to Newgate Prison was first mentioned in 1585, but the building was destroyed in the Great Fire of London in 66 and rebuilt in 1667. Public hangings were held in the street outside till May 1868. Prisoners would be led along Dead Man's Walk which ran between the buildings and many were hang of the hanged were buried under the walk itself. The Crown Court at the Old Bailey Building hears major criminal cases. But this current building you see here was completed in 1902 with some renovations done during the war as it was hit. Some of the country's most notorious trials have happened at the Old Bailey, including those of the Cray twins who were sentenced here for life, and Dr Crippen who was hanged in Pentonville Prison in London for murdering his wife. The Yorkshire Ripper, Peter Sutcliffe and Ruth Ellis, who was the last woman in the UK to be hanged, were all sentenced here. On top of the dome is Lady Justice. She holds a sword in her right hand and the scales of justice in her left. The statue is popularly supposed to show a blind justice, but the figure is not blindfolded. This is because Lady Justice was originally not blindfolded. As we follow the courts around the corner, down here is the site of the Newgate prison that was built in the 12th century. The ki conditions inside the prison were said to be horrendous. Those that had been sentenced to death stayed in a cellar beneath the keeper's house. It was said to be no better than a sewer, as that's where the sewerage ran. It had chains and shackles down there, and the dungeons were so dark and dirty that no doctor would go down there. The prisoners had lice and jailers left the prisoners chained up to the wall to starve. Prisoners who had money could pay the guards and have their shackles removed and go for a walk in circles out in the yard. The prison was demolished in 1904. Just over the road from the Old Bailey, we have the Viaduct Tavern. Well, this tavern is supposed to be haunted and a bullet hole can be seen in one of the many paintings on the wall of the tavern. The canvas has remained in place since a drunken World War I soldier discharged his weapon within the building. In a previous video, we saw the church of St Bartholomew's. Here is where the journey begins of the unholy trinity, the body snatchers. I'm pretty sure most of you have heard of the nursery rhyme, Oranges and Lemons. Oranges and lemons, say the bells of St Clement. It was made to remember where the bells were in each churchyard around London. This church also features in the nursery rhyme. When will you pay me, say the bells of Old Bailey? The bells in this church were not only rung for celebrations and funerals. Given its location facing the Old Bailey execution site, the bells would ring also for execution. St Bartholomew's Hospital is right over the road from this churchyard. Although it is paved now, back when the body snatchers patrolled the area, this graveyard actually looked like a working graveyard of its time and in a prime location for the hospital. In the 18th and early 19th centuries, there was a shortage of cadavers um, available for dissection by doctors. Large sums of money could change hands for fresh corpses, many of which were dug up pretty much as soon as they were buried. There was a watch house built at this particular churchyard to deter, to deter body snatchers. Guards would stand here day and night watching over the deceased. 
this is how the saying the graveyard shift appeared and this is what the, that saying originated from If you look to the left of your screen, you can see the churchyard railings and uh, the watchtower there. And on the right is St Bartholomew's Hospital. The hospital used to rely on executions for their bodies, but these were not enough for the doctors to teach students on. This was a teaching hospital after all. And they used to research the an anonymity of the body bots. I can't say that word. So they relied on resurrectionists or body snatchers to you and me. If you walked into certain parts of St Bartholomew's Hospital back in those days, you would have been greeted with shelves upon shelves of jars. These jars were filled with pickled organs, body parts and even fetuses and babies. Many argue without, that without this hospital doing this, Medical advancements would have been very slow and even practiced on the living. So coming up here we have the corner of Cock Lane. Tee hee, I'm so immature. Here is where the Great Fire of London actually had stopped. It, it was a uh, a seedy uh, corner of medieval London and one of only a few places in where brothels were actually legal and right here is where there stood the pub the fortune of war this is where during the body snatch during the time of the body snatching the corpses were held in a back room here until surgeons at the nearby St Bart's could come and pick them up the pub was demolished in 1910 but a small 17th century memorial was saved and it still stands in its original position, that little gold boy. The memorial writing reads here, the golden boy, boy of Pie Corner. The boy at Pie Corner was erected to commemorate the staying of the Great Fire, which, beginning at Puddin Lane, was ascribed to the sin of gluttony when not attributed to the papists as on the monument and the boy was made prodig prodigiously fat to enforce the moral he was originally built into the front of this public house called the fortune of war which was used to occupy the which used to occupy this site was pulled down in 1910 the fortune of war was the chief house of court of call north of the river for resurrectionists in body snatching days. Years ago the landlord used to show the room where the benches around the walls the bodies were placed, labelled with snatchers names, waiting till the surgeons of St Bartholomew's could run round and appraise them. The body parts are still available to see but only at certain times of the year. This is because uh, many of the surgeons are still trained here and the hospital is actually still in use. The upside was, if there was one, that each cadaver was a highly valued treasure and this still remains the case after the Anatomy Act of 1832 which saw the end of body snatching. 